Okay, here we go. We are talking about functions because this is the functions review. Why are we reviewing? Because there's a final coming. So why aren't we talking about probability anymore? Well, we are going to again, but it won't be till the end of January. I know, it seems crazy, but uh, we have a week of review, and then we have a week of finals. And so that's like two weeks. And then two weeks from now, we start talking about probability again. It's not like we're going to start you off with a test on your first day, you know, of the semester. But once we start talking about probability again, we'll talk about it for two or three days. Then you'll have a test on probability. Actually, just a quiz. Because this probability unit's pretty long. So anyway, bottom line is you can forget about probability for a while. Probability will not be on the final. That's correct. And uh, we're going to read... We wanted to give you a fair amount of review because the final is cumulative, as in every single thing we've done in class will be on the final. Can that be realistic? Not really, because we could have too many problems. But uh, pretty much everything you've been tested on, that stuff you're going to see again. All right, so here is an example of stuff you've been tested on. Here's a couple of functions, f of x and g of x. What's f of 2? Don't say it. Write it on your paper. It's really easy if you know what function to stick that into. Don't say it, write it. Just scribble it in the corner of a piece of paper. So you, I've actually engaged that part of your brain that writes. All right, so you're putting 2 in, hopefully here and here. And that means 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 9 is 15. Raise your hand if you wrote 15 on your paper. You're right. Good job. OK, moving on. What's the value of g of x? Oh, sorry, of x if g of x is 36. Now, this one's written different. They can either give you x like they did here, or they can give you what x, no, no, what g of x equals, or what f of x equals. I like to think of it this way. What's f of x the same as? Y. So they're either going to give you x, or they're going to give you y. Those work particularly good when we get to graphs like this, because you guys know where y is. Whereas if I said, where's g of x, it might get confusing. But if I just said, where's y? It's the same thing. f of x or g of x or y are the same thing. So in this one, they gave you x. In this one, they did not give you x because they still is an x in the problem, right? They gave you a y. If they gave you y is 36, we go to the g function. This one's out. We're just looking at this one now. And in the g function, I'm supposed to put 36 where? On the left side or the right side? The left side. Because g of x is 36. That right there is 36, see? Maybe you got your lefts and rights confused. Anyway, so then what would work? What number for x works? 6 and negative 6. Because doesn't negative 6 squared also equal 36? All right. Now, some of you might be saying, but you told us before that when you do the square root of 36, the answer is just 6. That's true. Watch what happens. When I'm solving this, I go square root, square root, and I have square root of 36 is just 6. So how come I get two answers? Because the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Do you remember that? I've tried to pound that into your head because you're going to see that like four times between now and uh, next fall. Okay, you're going to see it again on a final. You're going to see it in pre-calc three times when you get to pre-calc. This is going to come up on tests. So the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x, too. All right, we got interrupted. Now we're back. So how do I finish this? Because absolute value of x means that I'm not done. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I need to get this to be just plain x. So what do I do? I put a plus or minus on the 6. So plus or minus 6. So I usually write this the other way. x equals plus or minus 6. Looks a lot better. Do you get what just happened there? All right. If you really got what just happened there, I want you to stop and figure out two things for me. On your paper, please write this. f of negative 7. Figure out what that is. I'm going to pause while you do that. All right, hopefully what you did was you stuck in a negative 7 mainly right here. And that makes negative 21 plus 9. That'd be like negative 20 plus 8, which would be like negative 12. Raise your hand if you had negative 12 for your answer. Good. Then how about if I say f of x is 15? Didn't I just tell you the answer? Well, sort of. I told you what? The y. And you have to figure out what the x is. So you go back and you put in, this has to go here. f of x is right there, so I put 15. 
And then I solve that, and you can do it in your head if you want to. Dos. Raise your hand if you had two. All right. Because three times two is six. Six plus nine will make 15, so it works. All right. So remember, they can either give you x or they can give you y. In a problem like this, they're giving you y. All right, look at this one. Same deal. They can either give you x or they can give you y. And in this one, and soon when you guys have the iPads, my class, for those that are listening at home, doesn't have iPads yet, but this would be on your iPad. Like we can save the, the smart board notes, and we do, so that you can look them up, open them, your iPad right in front of you would have this graph so that if you were having a hard time reading, like, you know, go to negative 7 on the X and you're like, oh, I can't read it from the back row, you can just be able to zoom in on your desk. So it'll be, it'll be better for things like this. It also means that notes, when you take notes, as long as we save these smart board notes every day, when you open them, you can take your notes right on the smart board pages. So you don't have to, like, write the example all out because it's already written out. Sort of like having a worksheet. So that's another way that the iPad should make your life a little better. Actually, it's harder for the teachers because now we have to take all of our smart boards and save them as PDFs and post them on Schoology, but it'll make your life better, so we do it. All right. So there's some ways that make the smart boards or the, the iPads will actually make it harder to teach, but there'll be a lot of advantages for you, and so that makes it worth it. And there'll be some ways it'll make it easier for us to teach. So it kind of ends up working out to be a a positive for for everybody and hopefully as long as once we get good at using them there'll be a lot of cool things that you can do that we can't do without them so all right moving on f of two if I doing this I'm telling you that x is two okay look at the picture look at where x is two if x is two right there but there's nothing there well you just follow it down until you find the spot right there so that's 2 comma negative 2. So what do you think they want for an answer? Negative 2. They already told me the 2, so I want negative 2. Another way to think of it is they already told me the x, and what do they want then? The y. All right, on this one, they did not tell me the x. They must have told me what? The y. And the y is 4, and I go up to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there, and I go over until I touch right there, and that spot right there is at negative 2 comma 4. If I already knew the 4, what do you think they want for an answer? Negative 2. x equals negative 2. All right. If you understood that, then you should be able to answer these couple questions about them. Instead of doing f of 2, let's try what's f of x equals 2. That's kind of trick question. Don't get tricked. Got an answer or a question? Okay. Tell me how to do it. Don't tell me the answer. Tell me how to do it. Find where y is 2. Okay. So if I think that y is 2 right there, now what? Yep, I go across until I touch. Do you notice that it touched twice? And therefore, how many of you have two answers on your paper? Ah, see, some of you wouldn't have got it right because there's two answers for this one. Right there is one of them, and that's at x is negative 1, comma 2. And this spot right there is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You are correct, except it's negative 5, comma 2. So my two answers where x, or sorry, where the y is 2, see, y is 2, y is 2, are at x is negative 1, and x is negative 5. There's two answers in this case. Do you get that? Raise your hand if you get that. You understand that now? Good. Okay. Moving on. The parent, the mother function, so to speak, is the black one there. So this red one has been moved. It's been translated is the official name for that. Write down, if you can remember what, how these work, write down what the answer is. And if you don't remember, you'll see why we're reviewing. It's really not that hard. In 
-hmm. Don't just say it moved two to the right and down three. Even though you're right, the way to write it would be a special notation. Yes, sir? Y equals parentheses. X minus two. All right, minus four. Now, you said it moved two to the right and down four. I think it only. Here, how, here's how we can tell. Follow this little pointy spot. See, it's kind of like a mountain top there. Down to here. You see how it went down three? Oh, okay, so you're close. It is hard to see from the back row. Again, once you have the iPad, you'll be able to see it just fine because it'll be on your desk and you can zoom in and all those things. Okay, back to this. You're really close, but actually there's one thing missing. Does anybody have something on their answer? Nope. It did not flip. Minus would mean flipping, and it didn't flip. Ah, see, you all got it wrong. F of. Now, the reason you put an f of in there is because we don't know what the function was in the first place. So we have to start with f of x. This parent one is f of x. So then to change it, you just say f of x, and then you add things in the middle and on the outside. It's really easy to forget the f. Again, just a little putsy thing, but you're just a little smarter than you were a second ago. All right. This is a six-question little assessment to see if you're on top of what we've been just doing for the last few seconds. It's a homework quiz. It's six points. I want you right now to log in to your little blue remote dealy bob, the Sentio. And I'll pause for a second while you log in. Let's see. So we're taking this quiz. I want to warn you about number six. It's tricky. Pausing again. Okay, I'm having kids suggest it's hard to see from like the back row. I'm going to give you a few reference points here. That's positive 5, in case you would need that. That's negative 5, in case you would need that. The peak that it goes to here is up 4. The lowest it goes down here is at negative 2. Okay, here you go. Okay, we're back. Let's see how you did. I assume, is everybody done? Raise your hand if you are not done. Okay, good. So I'm going to hit stop then. So go forward to here and hit stop. And it says, look at that. I, almost everybody got six wrong. So I warned you. Some of you got it right. All right. <laughs> That's why they were all arguing with you. Okay. Pretty much everybody got them all right, except for that last one. So let's talk about that last one. I think, shh, I think you knew that I did not tell you x, right? I told you y. Y was negative 2. So you go to y as negative 2, and there it is. So you follow it over there, and you, so you think, oh, well, the answer is right there. And the answer would be 2 comma negative 2. So this part they already gave me, right? So this my answer must be 2, but no. Here's the thing. That part's got to be 2. So that means this part right here has to be 2, right? So if this part's 2, what's x got to be? x has to be 0. Do you get how that works? If I put in a 0 here, it'll be 2. That's, that's different. If you wanted to think of it that way, if it had been a function that got moved, then this would have been moved to the left. But the point is here that this part right here has to be 2 because we know f of 2 is negative 2. We know that because of this right here. So then if you just line these up, that has to equal that. And 2 has to equal x plus 2. And the only way that works is if x is 0. Now who are the proud, like, 4 that figured that one out? All right, nice job. 1, 2, 3, actually 6. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So this one, because of that vicious problem, is not going in the grade book because otherwise you'd almost all get a 5 out of 6 right off the bat. And then if you got anything else wrong, you'd have like a B minus, and that's kind of harsh. So the, this is just kind of for practice, making sure you know function stuff. Oh, got somebody at the door pausing. All right, so we're back again after another interruption. So from here, it really just gets to be more complicated functions, but it's the same idea. 
like this one, if I am uh, going to use this function, it's just more complicated function. But I still just, they told me x or they told me y. What did they tell me here? They told me x. They told me x is 2, and so I stick a 2 in here. I do 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 8 is 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Final answer is 9. So they're just more complicated functions, that's all. So from there, I think you're really going to have no trouble with this. Now, there's a whole other sentio, but I don't think we need to use it. So I'm going to give you work, time to work on your packet. We have a big old review packet, which is helpful to know exactly what do you need to know for the big final. Today's assignment is just do the front page, front and back of the front page, and here it comes. <laughs>